I was introduced to rusts on a trip to South Africa. Now before that trip, if you had asked me what a rusk was, I would have guessed a bush pig. <laughs> I have no idea. A rusk is a wonderfully crunchy tea time biscuit. Now this is something you guys need in your life. I didn't even know how delicious and delightful they were um, because I usually don't eat with tea. I just drink my tea in the morning. But this changed everything. So today I'm going to show you how to make South African rusks. Now for those of you that have found my channel searching for Oma style rusks, that was my baseline. Oma was my favorite brand when we were traveling through South, South Africa. And I've made maybe seven batches of them, tweaking the recipe just a little bit until I got something that was not only as good as Oma Russ, but better. I ordered a box a couple weeks ago, and my memory of them was so much um, more vivid than the actual experience of them. There's a there's a fake and artificial flavor flavoring in there um, that I don't like. So these are going to be better than Oma Rusks. But the Oma Rusks had a texture that I loved. Firm, yet would soften when you dunk them, but not too crisp, not too hard, and not too shortbready either. So I think I've come up with the perfect rusk, at least in my opinion. There's a little bit of whole wheat in this, and if you have graham flour, use that. It's graham flour has um, a larger wheat kernel, wheat particle. But I'm just using whole wheat and regular all-purpose flour. As always, my full and complete recipe is below. Now this recipe I made a little bigger than the one I'm going to put below just because I want it to fit fully in my quarter sheet pan. Um, but it's, you know, it's like a kilo and a half. It's three pounds of flour. So for those of you that may or may not want to go that deeply into rusk land, I'll put the smaller recipe below. If you want the larger one, just leave a comment and let me know. So to get started, we have our dry ingredients, which is our whole wheat and a regular flour. We have baking powder and baking soda and salt. These are our dry ingredients. And then our wet ingredients, we're going to have our buttermilk, sugar, and eggs. And the fat is coconut oil and butter. Now this is extra virgin coconut oil because that coconutty flavor lightens um, and just gives it a really nice element. Butter can get really like rich if you use a lot of butter in a recipe. So I love um, the balance of the two. This recipe comes together in a couple parts. The wet ingredients are going to get mixed together. So to our buttermilk, we're going to add our eggs and our sugar. And I'm going to whisk that really well until all of the ingredients are nice and incorporated and most of that sugar, if not all of it, is, um, has been dissolved. We're gonna set that aside. And then we're going to take our flour and I'll probably get rid of the cutting board and just toss it out on the counter because that's just the easiest way for me to get everything integrated. These bowls, sometimes when you're digging and you're trying to get in there, they're just never big enough, aren't they? Then we're going to sift all of our dry ingredients. So our, our soda and our baking powder, our salt and our flour. And I'm just going to whisk those all together to get them well incorporated. And then I'll sift them a couple times back and forth just to make sure that the ingredients get fully integrated. Once all of our dry ingredients have come together, we're going to integrate our fat into our flour. Now I want all of the flour coated with the fat. I don't want any pockets of dry flour that hasn't been coated because that will make tough rusks. We want to go ahead and smush the flour in between our hands and the oil and get every bit of it incorporated. So I know it's ready when I don't feel any more butter lumps. I just feel kind of this 
universal sandy texture. Now for those of you that don't have buttermilk on hand, you can acidify regular milk and you have to acidify it if you're converting a recipe because the leavening in the recipe depends on that acid. So you can do it in a couple different ways. You can add lemon to your water. And you can also add um, vinegar. So you just add, I don't know, for a cup I might do a couple tablespoons and um, let it sit for 15 minutes or so, 10 minutes, and just let it kind of curdle and, and, and do its thing. And that will be a nice kind of a nice substitution for buttermilk. You sacrifice the flavor. Buttermilk is really, um, wonderful in recipes, especially simple recipes like this one where it's the main ingredient for, um, for flavor. Okay, so here we have our big mass. Look at this all, these pieces brought together. And you don't want to overwork the dough. You don't want to form a lot of that gluten and make it tough. So I'm just going to give it a couple quick kneads. That looks pretty good. Now I've found working with this giant dough ball, it's easiest if you work in thirds. <laughs> so cut off one third. It's a simple technique for rolling these out. I'm just going to roll them into logs and cut them in half. And then cut them lengthwise down the middle. And that way I have, I can make equal cuts and get about the right size balls. So that'll give me about that many. Repeat that. Since I've made these so many times, I have a sense of about how big of a rusk I want. And so for you guys at home, try to keep them around 60 grams. That's about a little over two ounces. Grease a, this is a quarter sheet pan. This larger recipe actually makes this pan full. If you make the smaller version of this recipe, which will be included below, you can use like a nine by nine. Kind of a brownie pan should be just about perfect. Or you could use a couple bread pans and just do a couple pans worth. Now when I roll these out, I try to keep their shape. And I've also found that if you roll them on the cut side and leave this top, you get not only a nice kind of smooth top, but they don't crumble and fall apart um, when you dunk them as easily. So you'll find a system that works for you. And go ahead and just smush them in your pan. 
pan, any that are just way too big, um, go ahead and cut them down and then you can, you can have some larger ones and some smaller ones. They, you want them to be fairly even so they cook evenly. I like, sometimes I'll want like one big one and then if I want another one, I can go back and get a little one instead of having two big ones. And just repeat the rolling and getting them all stuffed in the pan until they're all done. an hour your rusks will be fully cooked but just not dried out so let them sit for about 10 minutes 15 minutes or so just long enough that they'll cool down so that you can pull them apart a little bit set up is better than um, too warm these were pretty warm and I, a few of them I broke the tops off when I was pulling them apart so there's a there's a sweet spot there for not being too rushed Now this is the pan that I made earlier and did the video. This is actually the third time I've done this video. You need these rusks in your life and it is my duty to bring them to you. Um, the first time I missed the whole main, main camera intro clip, so, so me actually making the recipe. The second time I had an audio sync issue. And so this was the second batch that I made this afternoon. Um, I did get some new baking powder um, and it was a different brand than I usually get. And these guys are mammoth. <laughs> I think the baking powder made them super tall. So these are, that's a monster rusk. Um, normally they're maybe more like this size. <laughs> so these are gonna be like a one breakfast rusk. It's like really like three in one. Um, so you can make them whatever size you want, whatever size you enjoy. So I've got, I've got some huge ones and we're hitting the road. We're gonna go camping. So they're gonna come with us. And it's always fun to have something delicious and yummy when you're out there in the woods. A really um, lovely cross between like an Irish soda bread and a biscuit. Now these guys are going into a 250 degree oven for about three hours. I'm going to set the timer on one hour intervals and I'll just stop and pull them out and give them a 180 flip just to ensure that they get fully dried all of the way and make sure you flip every one of them and then set it for another hour and do the same. And when they're done, they will be crunchy and so delightfully um, dried out. When you dip them into tea or coffee or hot chocolate, they're so, so good. So I hope you enjoy this recipe. Let me know if you make it. Leave a comment below and let me know your favorite travel food. I'm always looking for um, inspiration recipes to kind of tweak and make my own. And this one certainly was a home run for me. It was, it took quite a few um, batches to get it just right. And I'm very proud of this one. So enjoy them, make them, share them. That is the perfect rusk. The texture is just short enough, crumbly, shortbready enough. But when you dunk it, it doesn't get soggy, it stays it has this kind of crispness. The coconut oil is a perfect balance for the richness of the butter. It gives a wonderful flavor to the rusk. The sugar is just right. A little more on the sweet side than I like, but I have another rusk fan in the family, so he likes his just a tiny bit sweeter. Um, they're perfect. The texture is wonderful and the flavor is far superior than those boxed rusks you might find. 
So for those of you that have just found this video, fellow Rusk enthusiasts, welcome to the channel. I did a video where, um, here I'll put the link here, where I um, talked about my process in building and developing recipes, especially those that have a significant food memory for us. And so um, for the rest of you, if you have enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up, leave a comment below. Those are perfect ways that you can support my work. So thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next video.